Hi, I'm Alicia and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I want to show you how to make the loop basket. I am rating this an advanced level basket because of the angling of the side. I've also added in some art yarn for different color and texture and then um, also the loop. So if you are new to making baskets, I recommend starting with one of the baskets on my website, which will be linked in the description. You could either choose the short knotty basket, the handle basket, or the simply small basket set. And then for a second basket, I would recommend you try the big bowl, which is also available for free on my YouTube channel. Um, and then this would make a great third basket. So what you'll need for this is cotton filler cord. For the size basket that I made, I used nine yards. You will also need some single twisted macrame string. The colors that I used is nude and sand. And then if you choose to, you can also add in some hand spun art yarn. For my basket, I used four yards. These are all available on my website, either by themselves or as a bundle. And lastly, my basket measures about 10 inches wide by three inches tall. You can adjust that to your liking. Um, but to get the dimensions that I have, I did nine rows for the base of my basket and eight rows for the side. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we'll take one end of our filler cord and cut it at a angle. And then I already have three or four yards cut of the string that I'm going to start with. So remember that we always start in the center of the basket. So whatever you want the bulk or the base color to be, that's what we're gonna start with. And then we work our way outwards and upwards. So this will be the last color. So for the um, base of my basket, I am gonna use nude. So I've already cut off three or four yards. And on one end of that string, we'll just thread our needle and we'll set that to the side. And then just run your fingers through it to take out any knots or kinks. And then we will start with the non-needle side first. So we're just gonna place that right on top of our filler cord at about three inches from the end of the cord. Place it right on top so that it dangles down the front or the bottom. And then we're just going to start wrapping around both the end of the string and the cord. And we're gonna wrap to the right. And the way that I'm wrapping is up the back, over the top, down the front, up the back, over the top, down the front. And wrap until you have about three quarters of an inch remaining. And then we'll loop these two unworked sides together. So with the string coming out the back or down the back, if it's not there, just wrap it around again so that it's coming out like that. Now we're gonna start wrapping to the left and we're gonna wrap around in the opposite way that we just did. So now I'm gonna come up the front, over the top, down the back. And do that for about six wraps, just so that the end of the filler cord is um, covered, which for me usually ends up being about six wraps. 
give or take. Okay, so what we have right here, this is row one. So this is this row right here. Now I have an extension that is going to start row two. So we're going to bring that around to the left side and we're going to start working around. So now grab your needle and we're going to pull that through that center from the bottom coming out the top and then pull the rest of the string out as well. You can set your needle back down and we'll wrap around both row one and row two. So that is called a double wrap. That is when we wrap around two rows. Up until this point, we've just been doing single wraps where we wrap, wrap around just the single cord. And so that is what is going to secure your basket together. So after a double wrap, then I follow that with three single wraps and then another double wrap. If you're having a hard time getting your needle through that center hole, if you pinch it, that will create an opening for you. So what I love about working with this type of macrame string is that as I work with it, it will relax. And it creates a nice broad string for covering up that filler cord. So you'll notice that it will untwist as you go around. That is okay. Um, like I said, that creates a really nice broad string. And so then you don't see that filler cord underneath. Twine also works or jute cord works, um, but you just have to be a little bit more careful and slow so that you make sure that you don't have any gaps in your filler cord. Um, but they make really cool baskets too. There's pros and cons to all of them, but this is definitely my favorite kind to work with. And it has so many beautiful colors. Okay, so I'm almost all the way around. And so as you work outwards, you will always be pulling through your double wraps from the previous row. So once I complete my second row here, I will no longer be pulling from that center. Okay, so I now have two full rows. You will always be able to tell what row you're on based on where this extension or this hump comes out. Um, so remember we had row one, then we kind of made an extension outwards and then that started row two. This is a really good guide for you to know what row you're on, all you need to do is have that extension or that hump pointing out to the left and just count outwards. And so um, as you keep working out, you can count one, two, now I'm gonna start on three, and there'll be four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so now I'm going to start pulling through. From the next row. Now 
Now when you're pulling through on your double wraps, try not to hook fibers from that previous row. It's okay if you occasionally hook one or two. You can pull it through and they'll just snap. And you can go through at the end and clean up any of those loose snapped fibers. But if you're um, constantly pulling through them, and if you're pulling through more than one or two, you maybe want to back that out and try again. You'll get a feel for it as you go. You may find yourself in the beginning constantly hooking on them, but with a little bit more experience, you won't do it as often. Um, okay, and so I'm just going to keep going around. One more thing, two more things I want to mention is that as you're pulling through your double wraps, definitely always turn your work over and check it. Um, also feel with your hands that you're not getting a knot or a kink back here so, because it may feel like you've pulled it all the way through when in fact you may have a knot. Um, if you do that, just unwrap until you get to that point, uh, release the knot, and then go again. Uh, but it's obviously easier to catch it when you do it right away instead of getting too far along in the basket. Um, and then the second thing is, is if you want a nice flat bottom for your basket, try to have some type of hard surface near you where you can press your um, base of your basket in. So if you just press that in, it will create a really nice flat bottom as you're working your way around. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to restart when it's time for me to change string so that you can see how to do that process. Okay, so I am ready to change string, and you're going to want to change string when you have about 12 inches left of the current string that you're working on. Go ahead and cut another three or four yards off um, of your <clears throat> roll of string. And take one end and place it right on top of that filler cord where I'm going to be wrapping around. And continue your normal pattern of wrapping three single wraps followed by a double wrap. I like to do that for at least three wraps, somewhere between three and five or six, just to, just to secure that in. So then I'm going to take my needle off and put it on my new string. And I'll just set that down. I don't like to transition on a double wrap, so I like to wait until I get to the next single wrap. And all we need to do is just switch places for these. So I'm going to take my new string and pull that up. And now work with that one. And I'm going to take my old string and place that right along the filler cord. So I've just switched rolls. And again, wrap around that for somewhere between three and six wraps to secure that in. And then you can just go ahead and cut it off. All right, and then you can just keep going around. So you'll want to do that um, anytime that you're at the end of the current string that you're on, or if you want to change colors. So when you get to when you want to change colors, make sure that you have a your full row completed before you start on a new color, so that you can have um, an even row of the color that you're going to start on. 
Um, but the process will be the same whether you're adding more string in or switching colors. Okay, so I have completed nine full rows. So my hump is right here. If I just come out, I finished my ninth row and now I'm ready to start working on my 10th row. And my 10th row is when I'm gonna start working upwards. So for this basket, I don't know if you can tell, probably this isn't probably the best view, but um, I have it coming outwards until about halfway and then I start coming inwards so that it creates kind of a really cute bowl shape. And so I think that I'm going to do eight rows upwards for my side. You can do however, much, however many rows you want, um, but for a nine row basket, I think I'll go up eight rows. Um, so when I do that, then I'll angle out for four rows going outwards and then I'll do kind of the fifth row as just a, a regular straight one and then the last two rows or so I like to bring them inwards. So the way to do this is for the um, next three or four rows because we'll be going outwards we're going to put our filler cord halfway up. So if it would be if this would be um, aligning with the base, and then that would be all the way up to create a straight basket. I'm gonna go in between those two spaces. So again, if it's flat, and then if I put it up straight on top, I'm gonna go halfway. So it's going to be slightly off, kind of hanging off of that ninth row. And then we'll just, continue wrapping as normal. This part is a little bit tricky, getting this first row in there. Uh, but it does get easier as you work your way around. And then with each row, I think just gets easier and easier. So you'll still do the wrapping the same way except um, now your previous row that you're pulling your double wraps through, instead of being directly next to it, it's going to be below it. And then you'll just wanna hold that filler cord in place and make sure that it um, stays consistent all the way around. And again, this first one is the hardest and then it gets a lot easier. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going around and around for about another three, three or so rows, maybe four. Remember that when you're counting your rows upwards, that this ninth row is, is counted. So I did nine rows outwards, and then as I go up, I'm going to count this one again for, um, to make eight rows. So that would be um, like this. It'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. I'll show you on this one. So this is actually eight rows, but you can ignore that. So um, counting upwards, I would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm counting that one as I count upwards. Okay, so um, I will pause the video. I'm gonna go and um, continue on. And then when I get to the row that I'm going to put my hand spun art yarn in, I will start back up. And I'm gonna do that probably the sixth row, but I'll let you know when I get there. Okay, so I have almost completed my fifth row and now I'm gonna start on my sixth row. And the sixth row is where I'm going to add in my hand spun art yarn. And so I'm still going to be using the nude color that I started with. And this um, sixth row will be my last row of using that. So you can see in this one, 
how I used the white all the way and the row that I used the art yarn in, uh, the white is below that. And then the next two rows is where I'll add in my darker color, which I have chosen sand. Okay, so what we need to do, um, don't unwrap that, just leave that in a nice tight bundle. But there is going to be a knot at the end, and I'm just going to cut that off. And I'm going to add this in, but I actually won't be using it until I'm totally done with this row. Okay, so after I would go a little bit longer with this one um, as you're putting it in, three to six wraps um, is fine if you're adding in regular string. But when I'm adding in the art yarn, I like just a little bit more just to really secure it in uh, because when we start um, using it, we might pull it a little bit harder and uh, we definitely don't want to accidentally pull that out because uh, that would be very frustrating. Okay, so I have done, so about nine or 10. So now what we're going to do is we're just gonna keep this in a bundle and we're going to flip that up Put it right there and I'm going to keep wrapping and I'm going to do the whole row and I'm just going to leave my art yarn to sit here in the basket while I do the whole row and when I get back to my starting point is when I'm going to put my needle on the other end of it and I'm going to start pulling it through. So we're just going to wrap it around. And so we won't be doing double wraps or anything with this. It'll just be all single wraps um, that are over this row. And so I'll show you that in a second. Let me go all the way around. And when I get back to here, when I'm done with my sixth row, then I will uh, start the video again. All right, so I have made it all the way back around and I am now at the spot where I had um, placed my art yarn out. Um, and that's where I'm gonna begin with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this one up because we're gonna leave this one behind for now. Leave that there and then we'll unwrap this one. And I'm gonna undo that knot or you can cut it off depending on how clean it is. And we'll thread the other end of that. I use a um, larger needle for this one. Okay, so now we're just going to start threading through. And going around that roll that we just did. So I like to do about two, one or two wraps per section. 
So I'm counting a section which is in between two double wraps. So I just did two for the last section, so maybe this one I'll just do one. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, so I'm just going to do one in that one. It's totally up to you. Um, if you have... If you have three or four yards, you should get around just fine. So let's do two wraps in this one. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going around my basket. And then uh, when I get back to the end of this row again, I'll start the video and let you know how we transition to the rest of the basket. All right, so I have made it all the way back around with my yarn and I used pretty much exactly four yards. If you um, want it tighter or looser, just adjust that total as needed. Um, but I came to four yards. So now I'm going to add in my sand color, which is just a little darker than the nude that I was working on. Once I have that in, then I will transition that color and then I will um, tuck this yarn inside. So let's move over to the sand. Okay, and so let's finish this up too. Let's do one more, one more wrap here. Okay. Okay, so kind of organize these strings here we have a lot going on okay so I have my nude and my yarn together and now I have my new color which for me is sand and so let's cover both of those up So I am now on my seventh row and I am going to start angling my basket inwards. So as if we didn't have enough going on right now, we're going to also um, remember to angle this inward.
just like on this one, how you see that you can see that I come in at the top. So let's go for a few more wraps. And then I'll cut off this excess string. And so to angle inwards, we're just going to pull in the filler cord towards the center. And like I said, I like to cover up that yarn just a little bit extra in case it gets tugged or pulled. By accident while we're using it or or any time okay so we'll cut that off All right, so I'm just going to keep going around. When you are on the last row, then uh, at the very end is where we'll do the loop. So I'll pause the video, and when I get to that point, um, we'll do the loop together. Okay, well, we are almost done. So I am ready to do my loop now. So what I have done so far is I did two full rows of my um, top of the basket in the sand color. And when I got to the end point of that last row, um, when I was done making that full row, then I began making just single wraps. And I just kept going. And I still do it along the basket so that it can stay um, curved nicely and it doesn't get twisted in odd directions. So just keep going around the basket and skip all of the double wraps. So again, that is where I started doing that where I finished my last and final row. And then I just started doing single wraps. Now, what we'll do is we're going to cut this off at an angle and we're going to tuck it in here and then we're going to do double wraps just to secure this down. But make sure that you um, note where you are going to cut this and where you're going to tuck it in because this is all going to be covered. So make sure that you have your loop to the size that you want it to be, knowing that we are going to cut some off. So where we'll begin doing the double wraps, we'll start here. And so um, this will be the part that we'll be showing and all of this will be covered by our double wraps. So I'm gonna do kind of a big loop that seems kind of fun for me right now. Um, but like on this one, I did a much smaller loop, so it's totally up to you. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, cut this down, and I think I'll cut it right there. So that'll tuck in there. And just for extra security, I'm going to hot glue that in. Let's see, I'll do it on the bottom here. Just in case at some point someone maybe doesn't know and grabs 
the basket by the handle. I don't want it come to come undone uh, because that would be really hard to try to put that back in. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll begin our double wraps and we're going to be going in the opposite direction than what we have been doing. Which will feel a little weird. Also make sure that you have plenty of string left when you start doing your single wraps, though you can change string while you're doing single wraps. Um, it's fine, but I do find that it's easier to just have a lot of string. So um, even for me, when I was changing string back here, I pulled off about five yards just because I wanted to have plenty. And so once I finish covering up that last little bit of cord, then we'll go ahead and just tie this basket off on the inside. There, that looks like a good spot to end. Make sure that that side looks good. Let's do one more. Perfect. All right, we'll cut this off. All right. Well, that one is all done. Congratulations.